I have the privilege of uh, requesting our respected moderator, Mr. R. Srinivasan, Director, IRA Consulting Private Limited, along with our esteemed panelists, Mr. Anil Radhakrishnan, Director, Axex Supply Chain, Mr. Aniket Malshe, Director, Nikem Solutions, and uh, Mr. Pavitran Kalada, Managing Director, BDP, UGL Global Logistics India, India Region, who is joining us virtually today. Over to you, Mr. Srinivasan. Also need a mic. <coughs> Should we start? We'll wait for all the photographs to happen. <laughs> okay. So, how oh, so. Recording in progress. Okay. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, we'll share that. It's okay. Uh, thanks for being part of this uh, panel. And uh, this panel is coming at a very interesting time, you know, um, both from the larger perspective and today's perspective. So from the larger perspective, the pro these, you know, it's coming at a time when we are just out of COVID and we are hopefully looking at a better time. And then, you know, Mr. Jamal Maklai said, you know, the world is going to end, you know. <laughs> There is going to be recession and we don't know where the rupee is going even i don't know don't ask me he created enough problems for us <laughs> so i don't know what whether we should look for look at it positively negatively neutrally i don't know so that is one part of the story the second part of the story is if you look at today's sessions so you know we started with the export opportunities we had uh, the councils uh, consulate members being here then we had talked about finance we talked about you know dp world as uh, a logistic partner and therefore we are we thought that this could be a good uh, panel to talk about um, on the challenges that logistics uh, the SMEs face in logistics I'll give you a little perspective on what challenges we're talking about in COVID and that is where this panel is sort of uh, well represented so we have one person who is from an SME uh, business uh, we have somebody else who is also from, uh, you know, the logistics, shipping, has got years of experience in that. We can provide uh, some kind of an insight. So, what we are going to do is discuss the challenges that MSMEs faced and what could, be, what could we have done and what possibly we can do if such uh, things happen in future. And one thing that all of us are sure, you know, uh, somebody said, uh, the keynote speaker said, you know, it has not happened in the past. Sachidan Shukla talked about Nabhut on Bhavishati. It has not happened in the past. It should not happen in the future. We don't know. You know, we all can keep fingers crossed. One black swan event and you know, everything can happen. So, God forbid something like this happens. So, how do we sort of manage this entire ecosystem? So, um, let me introduce the panel. Aniket Malche. Aniket Malche runs a very successful SME. And Anil Radhakrishnan is a veteran in the logistics. So, I'll request you to, if you can quickly talk about what you do as a business for a minute and maybe Anil you could also introduce for the benefit of the audience and then we can start talking about the questions and what kind of answers. And possibly this will be one panel where we'll ask the audience to have more questions. So please feel free. Yeah. Aniket. So uh, hello everybody. My name is Aniket Malche. I'm the uh, founder of Nikem Solutions. Uh, we are a specialty chemical manufacturer. We are an R&D driven organization uh, based out of Thane Wagle state. Uh, we have our own R&D center and uh, more than 150 products. Uh, so it's a challenge to sell those products also. So all commercialized products are only about, you can say, 40. 
Uh, we have organized in different verticals, so we do polymer additives, water purification, agriculture, consumer products, home and personal care, these five divisions. And uh, we are growing uh, in all these divisions simultaneously. Uh, major export being in the, sorry, major focus has been on the export uh, lately. So our currently more than 50% turnover comes from uh, export market. So I would be talking about uh, the products, uh, so the challenges faced by uh, my company, especially for the exports. And then uh, we would have Mr. Anil to answer them basically. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I've been uh, in the industry for uh, last three decades, uh, running for, through maritime uh, shipping uh, supply chain. I, I would say, you know, I've done almost all in the uh, overall shipping and logistics. Uh, been with uh, AP Mola Merce client for 10 years. Then I was with uh, APL, American President Line. I was the managing director for Middle East and India uh, till 2012. And then I moved on uh, to Adani Group as their CEO and director for their uh, infrastructure and logistics. So this is my professional journey. And then after so many years, I thought, you know, why don't we have something uh, on our own? So uh, it, this thought came from, uh, uh, from one of our uh, uh, belief, like, you know, after working with large uh, multinational companies or the large conglomerate, I could see there is a gap between, uh, you know, what you commit to the customer and what you deliver. So that gap always remains uh, as a big, because for big companies, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, this is what we have, you take it or leave it. Then I felt there is an opportunity that we should come up with something where uh, we are closer to the customer, being <laughs> agile, being nimble. That uh, uh, brings us to start up a, a startup in uh, a supply chain. This is Access was formed, along with my industry colleagues uh, for so many uh, years. Uh, so we do end-to-end uh, uh, -end supply chain on the domestic side and uh, uh, mainly the idea is how uh, try to get into the supply chain of the company, figure out their uh, gaps, and then uh, how we can align uh, the customer expectation and make supply chain more seamless. I also sit in the board of uh, the private equity companies. I'm the board of Tamasek. I'm the board of uh, equity, uh, a company called, uh, fund called Equity. That's a Swedish-based company. So this is uh, just brief about uh, me. It's being very modest by saying it's brief. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, um, during COVID, there was there were a lot of problems as far as export is concerned. Uh, one had heard horror stories about the rates going up from you know two hundred dollars uh, to six thousand dollars and things like that. I'm sure as a person who has a company which has fifty percent exports, I'm sure you faced a lot of issues as far as availability of containers is concerned, rates going up. Uh, tell us some of the horror stories that you went through, and therefore that the audience will be able to sort of uh, empathize with it and say, oh, I have also gone through that. Um, so one good thing about Nikem is that we don't have any imports, right? So uh, we have actually modeled ourselves that way, that we don't do any direct imports. Uh, we are mainly focused on the export part of it. So that is, uh, so 50% less trouble, you can say, right? So we don't have to wait for the incoming raw materials. But again, I only say that no direct imports, which means that some of our raw materials are one way or other imported from somewhere else. So we saw unprecedented rise in some of the raw materials, which actually shot up the price to such a level where it was definitely not acceptable. So the only option at that point of time was to stop sale of that product because a uh, customer would never accept any such price. So it was uh, something that we had to stop. But fortunately... So does that mean you lost business? Yes, but then that also means that we had to be diversified enough to uh, basically make up somewhere else. Right. So our major export happens in US and uh, fortunately our US customer was uh, cooperative enough to take over the uh, logistics cost. So we didn't have actually trouble in uh, that fashion. So that actually brings us to another important point. Absolutely. CO, uh, FOB or CIF? Yeah, I mean those are uh, more specific ones. But I think uh, you've been lucky. Uh, your customer has paid. But there are enough and more stories of, uh, I'm sure you are in chemical business. So it's not a perishable kind of stuff. So it may have a long life, shelf life of about two, hour, two years. There are people who are in food businesses and uh, which was lying back and they had to destroy the food and the entire thing was gone. So I mean, how do you see this? I mean, this was a once in a lifetime. We have not seen it. Um, we have seen it. Our p grandparents might have seen it. Maybe our grandchildren will see it. This kind of a situation when things go out of hand, what is it that, uh, I mean, how do you plan logistics for such a kind of thing? 
um, see, you know, the, 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 the COVID situation we faced was unprecedented. So now, uh, let's say, let's take this as a, uh, as a base for our, uh, uh, you know, what, what should be our supply chain logistics uh, uh, planning for that matter. You know, uh, while coming back to the uh, MSMEs, uh, the small uh, players, the challenge which you guys are facing is uh, um, how much time you are spending on the supply chain strategy. Because uh, whether, is there, a, is there a, uh, every day the owner or the CEO or the director of the company, uh, is there a focus on that? So if, what I have seen even in the large companies, the supply chain comes not at the, the beginning, yeah, it's a marketing, all other function comes, then yeah, supply chain. But that role has changed now. Now supply chain is leading uh, m many of the companies because if you, show the, if, you, if you look at the differentiation a company can uh, do in the, uh, given the market is how robust is your supply chain. The, uh, your go-to-market strategy, how faster you can be the, uh, to, uh, to the market, how nimble your supply chain can be. So uh, this is the overall shift what I would say, the aftermath of uh, COVID, this has get more and more uh, uh, focus at this point. Essentially, you're saying there's a change in behavior. There's a change in behavior. But fundamentally, let us also understand a slightly different question. You know, uh, you talked about supply chain being the center stage of everything. Imagine, an, imagine a company with six crores, eight crores, ten crores. Um, he is running this entire operation, right? From how many workers have come to the factory to, you know, some inspector has come and, you know, this has happened, PF has happened, this has happened. He is running through the day. I mean, he is not able to afford quality manpower. Uh, the manpower that he has is the best quality that he has, right? I mean, it is impossible. It is a misnomer to say that MSEs, MSMEs don't have good manpower. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a misnomer. And we have seen it across so many clients that we work with. I, some of the best people, they may not be from Harvard, they may not be from IMA and so on. Look, but they are very good in what they are doing. But the owner is hard pressed for time. So how do you say that you know supply chain should be the okay. should be on top of the mind, or how do you bring it to the top of the mind? Okay. See, uh, when I uh, talk about supply chain uh, to be the, among the uh, top priority, first you should understand what is your core. What's a core business? Because if you are in manufacturing, just do manufacturing, and get the right people to do your supply chain. You know, because that, that is where it should lead to. Because uh, you should not spend your time uh, negotiating uh, the, 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 the transportation costs or the ocean freight. Because if you have seen that change in the, in the pattern also is coming. Uh, I, I'm not pushing for business. Uh, uh, but, you know, as a supply, you should get the right supply chain partner with you because he should be the one who should be able to deliver. Uh, well, it's a very valid point. Um, the only point is this. You know, a company who is 10 crores, why would a large, I mean, I don't know whether Devang would go and meet him, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> Devang, with no malicement, <laughs> right? Yeah. First is he will not even know that there is a 10 crore company available. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. he must be in Ambarnath, MIDC, which you don't know whether Ambarnath is right of, India, right of Bombay or left of Bombay. <clears throat> then, or he may be in Vasai Virar, you don't know where, which station to get on and how, which auto rickshaw to take. How does he identify a partner? He says, Mera ek, this fellow is there, freight forwarder, he will do everything yeah. and he will do ev everything for me. I don't know what cost he does and I will build it all in my cost. So it's a large company luxury to say I will have a DP world with me, I will have an Anil. <laughs> Not possible. So what does an SME do? Okay. Uh, see, um, it, it's the, I, I don't have a, a, a kind of a solution for that. But I can, I can just give some sort of a, a leeway. Uh, how the the service provider's mindset work. Because you need to position yourself to capitalize the mindset of uh, the uh, service provider. Say for instance, for uh, like what you said for DP World or for Merge Client for the matter or for the larger uh, service providers, definitely volume uh, plays a larger uh, role. And there are a lot of other uh, um, issues where, you know, when you have two containers, three containers, uh, uh, it, it's, it's quite natural. Even if you are in business, you will try to invest time where your returns are the highest, right? So what I suggest, which is something you should uh, uh, really try to do, one is there are few platforms like uh, uh, Devang has mentioned, there are many platforms which are coming up. But more than that, I'm, I'm suggesting to you, can you consolidate your business? Uh, in the sense, say for instance, if you are chemical uh, MSME, 
or you are a geography, can you consolidate even at a geography level, an MIDC based out of Ambarna, uh, maybe having 100 customers, you must be uh, <coughs> exporting one container or two containers. Can you consolidate among yourself and go with a consolidated volume for a negotiation? I'm again telling you, it is not going to affect your confidentiality of any of your uh, information. The strength lies in consolidation. Because, see, competition, gone are the days when we have to worry about the competition. It is, if you are good, you will, will survive. So I would, I would say, you know, that this collaboration is going to be the key. That is one. You, you, you try to uh, synergize your uh, number. And I'm telling you very clearly, if, it, if 100, 200, 300 containers per month, Nobody will ignore. I'm, any big shipping lines or any big forwarders, nobody is going to ignore. And get a right uh, uh, solution partner for them. That is one. Second one, invest in the right technology. Because there are, you know, your inventory management, your uh, uh, visibility, uh, uh, your transparency of the, uh, your overall supply chain. You don't need to put money now. A lot of uh, startups which has come up, where you can use the right technology, you, you pay as per the, your usage. So, but be smart enough to identify the right partner where you can leverage the technological advance on block te blockchain technology or IoT or whatever we call. There are a lot of very good uh, solutions which have come up. No, so, so these so are very valid point. These are two. Uh, one, 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 that, then, then work. Okay. N another point which I have, when I last five years I've been working very closely with a uh, small. Uh, enterprise as well. So space is uh, uh, money, right? So in, in, your, in your manufacturing, I've seen few, I've, I've, I've been myself to few uh, SMEs, and the way you manage it, uh, yeah, we'll, we have our own warehouse, we'll just dump the way we want. But why why you want to do that? Use that space for your manufacturing, because that is your core manufacturing area, right? And at the same time, there are a lot of uh, multi-user uh, warehouse coming up. There are a lot of, the, the warehousing uh, infrastructure is changing, the way we do warehousing is also changing. So you also pay for what you use. Because it, this, is, this, is, this is the new uh, change which is happening. So these three things I think you should... No, these are good ideas, but I, as an SME, uh, so, yeah, Aniket, so I want to check with I you. I see two problems. One no, is no, one, let me just sort of ask my question. Yeah. I mean, is, I mean, have you ever thought of finding out a partner who will manage your, you know? No. To be no. Honest. So basically, like I said, so we are... Uh, Basically, look for a freight forwarder and hand over the consignment to him and depend on him to take care of the overall thing. But the idea that you gave, consolidation, that sounds very good, but who is going to do it? Right? That's a big question. Right? But am I supposed to find 10, 15 or 100 more people uh, to consolidate? So that actually sounds like a startup idea, like we discussed <laughs> before. Some aggregator should come and probably do that. But till that time, we'll have to... Um, Rely on somebody. I'll, I'll, I'll give you. A, yeah, you finish. Up. And second thing is about the uh, warehousing that you said. So the, the problem is that when the material leaves my office, right, leaves my premises, it needs to be built. So when it goes to the freight forwarder, if suppose I use his space, do I have to add it in the GST as yeah. a POB or what kind of thing it works? Uh, you don't need to do that because we we used to have a lot of. Uh, uh, see, I'll tell you one of our customer. Um, there, uh, how it, it, it's an import customer. The, the way it works is the import uh, coming to freighted warehousing zone because we combine freighted warehousing zone with domestic uh, and all the imports coming there because you can have a duty deferment. And uh, um, the, the uh, goods which are going directly to the retailers, it will go directly from freighted. Then it is moved to a domestic warehouse. So I, I, you need to bill only when you finally move to your customer. You don't need to bill it when you move to the warehouse. Okay. So that is not needed. The second part which you said, now, the consolidation, it, it's not a startup idea alone because there are a lot of uh, uh, already, uh, uh, because otherwise, see, we can talk about this in this forum and then walk away. It's all fine and good. But how can a real solution uh, uh, to this problem come up? I, I would say, you know, uh, Rajan, you should also take an issue to see whether there is a, there are people who can work uh, uh, with you, uh, who can help you to consolidate. And see, of course, forwarders does, does that uh, role uh, uh, to a certain extent, but uh, they, they take care of only your exim part. 
I am talking about a, a, a partner who can do both exim plus domestic. So, uh, so some kind of a, you know, uh, door to door. Pick up from my door and ensure that it goes to the customer's door. Yeah. So, um, are there part, are there people today who would do it for a s small customer? Say somebody who is in who is at 15 crore company, who is a 20 crore company. His exports may be some five crores in a year. So, I mean, if he is making a so uh, let me give an example of a company which is into printing equipment, right? Uh, they make some 25 printing equipments each costs about two two and a half crores in a year. Uh, yeah, uh, each machine. 40% uh, of their business is exports. Right? They are large machines, 30,000 parts. You know, each machine is 30,000 parts. But um, so they do what Aniket said they will do. You know, get hold of a CHA and say, boss, tu gadi beje kar, wo kar. And somebody from their organization or the owner or the owner's son or owner, somebody will stand till the entire um, container is finished and it is leaves the container and then he goes home to sleep. Can there be somebody who can fill this gap? Uh, if you ask me, uh, you know, there are people. Okay. Uh, but uh, again, coming back to my earlier point, uh, you have to you have to show them the uh, business, the volume. Okay. Because it, it doesn't matter whether you you put if it's a container whether you put hundred crore in the inside the container or one Go crore on. inside. Yeah, correct. Container. Correct. For a logistics provider, it's a container. It's a, it's only the so volume. Uh, volume. So the, uh, if you can show the volume, and uh, that's what I'm saying. Say if, if, if tomorrow, if we, if, we, if we give an idea, like this is the consolidation point, within yourself you say, yeah, 10, 10 of us to, together, we are going to negotiate. We have 100, 200 containers. Definitely, I'm telling you. Uh, uh, there is a business there case. Is a business case. Okay. And another one is, like what I said, there are, there are good platforms. Like one, one I can, uh, I, I'm not naming it because this is an international <coughs> platform like what he has mentioned. They do the only the customs uh, uh, drayage part, customs brokerage, plus the entire uh, documentation. The best part what I've seen in that uh, uh, product is you will have the visibility of detention demurrage. This is the major issue which everybody, even large exporters or uh, importers are facing because you don't know the visibility and also they calculate and give you uh, uh, advanced information. Guys, clear it, otherwise this is going to hit you. So the technology has advanced so much, but the problem is, are we aware of this? Because first of all, we should be aware these are uh, there. Uh, then only you can optimize and see, this is good for me, and this is good. Why don't I try this one? So what I'm saying is, uh, I've, been, uh, the la I've seen the uh, industry uh, moving last <laughs> 25 years. This is the best time what uh, in, in uh, overall shipping, Absolutely. transport and logistics. True. Be it infrastructure, be it government support, the kind of policy uh, which is supporting uh, overall supply chain, and be it uh, innovation and technology. If we can do it now, I don't think in our lifetime we can do it. You know, no, that's a, that's a truism. Absolutely. So I think this, if this is possibly India's best time, there's no two ways about it. I think next two, three years, people are talking about China plus one and things like that. Um, I don't know whether China plus one always means India. It also means Vietnam. It also means Thailand. It also means other countries. But in terms of, I mean, uh, people who attended the first session, they all know that you know Denmark is great, but we don't have customers. You know, what we have in the other session is Denmark's population. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, what can it happen? So, I mean, if you talk about India as a as a country of 100, and, you know, we are huge, and this is possibly our time. Well, I wanted to pick your brain on this. Um, in the latest budget, we talked about 10 lakh crores you know, as infrastructure, 2.5 lakh crore for railway. How dramatically will this change the domestic logistics and your sense on how it is going to help MSMEs? Uh, see, that is a, it, it will have a, a far-reaching uh, impact only because uh, today, if you, if you look at the current uh, infrastructure, you know, the way after the uh, national logistics policy, Bharat Mala, all that, what we see, there is a lot of infrastructure which has come up. For instance, after the FDI has come in warehousing sector, uh, it's, it's close to 43 million square feet of uh, warehouse which has come up in 2022. And uh, CAGR is saying 10 to 15 percent growth in uh, warehouse infrastructure. So infrastructure is already there. Multimodal logistics parks are there. Uh, ports, you name it, across uh, India, we have ports, uh, 
we don't need any more ports. I will, I will, I will never say we need more ports. And then look at the uh, multimodal uh, linkage. You have rail, coastal transportation. So these are all there. This will definitely add to the uh, infrastructure. But if you ask me, the impact to the MSMEs, it, it, it's already there. Because the, uh, um, the overall vision of the government is to change the logistics cost from 14% down to 8 9%. In that whole uh, uh, journey, everybody is going to be benefited. Yeah, I mean, that's, that'll dramatically improve the competitiveness. Yeah, it, it but I think this is a question that, you know, people like Aniket or Virajan are people who are evolved as MSMEs. Mm, they participate, they understand. If you tell them a technology solution, maybe Aniket is a person who understands technology solution. But there are a lot of people. And typically, MSMEs are technocrats. He understands the engineering, he understands the chemistry, he understands the biology behind it, he understands whatever it is. What is it that we can do to communicate, to promote these ideas of, you know, you can consolidate or you can look at a technology solution or you should look at logistics as your priority, you should look at supply chain. As, are we doing enough as, a, as, a, as an industry? I, I refuse to keep asking about what the government is doing. I mean, forget, the government is doing what it's doing. What is it as an industry that we are doing to promote these ideas to say, you know, come on board. So for example, somebody like a Devang make a, makes a presentation here and maybe there are 50 MSMEs, 100 MSMEs who are looking at it and they say, oh, this is an opportunity that I didn't see. You are talking about it today. Maybe Aniket is talking about a couple of things. What is it that we can do to promote these ideas? You know, first of all, um, uh, if you ask me in my experience, uh, so many years, we have not, uh, I, I don't find any service provider, large ones, going and talking to MSME. So, uh, is it the other way or we should pull them? Because see, you know, you, 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 everybody knows there is a business out there. But how to attract them and talk to them? Because this is what you know, Bombay Chamber, uh, what we are trying to uh, do. Likewise, I think, you know, we need to have a more specific interaction. Maybe MSME from one particular sector or from uh, some focus kind of an initiative we need to do. Because, uh, what do you think as an industry member, what do you think, I mean, you're participating today, you're meeting Anil, some ideas are being thrown. Obviously, these are not some ideas that you might have discussed. So, among your uh, community, what kind of things that, I mean, first is, is there, is there a knowledge? No, if it is not there, what is it that we can do? Yeah, so I think some ideas have been discussed. So, um, what, definitely what I would like to do is explore what technologies are available. The platform that uh, Mr. Devang showed, even those kind of things. If if we can leverage any of those things, it will definitely add. And we need more transparency, like I said. So where is our shipment? What is happening? Who is what is the documentation required? Right. So we don't want a situation where our consignment is stuck at uh, the ports because of some smaller issues. Yeah. So we need a lot of consultancy or support in those things. So any information in that regard is going to add uh, more value. And if it is already consolidated under one technology forum, something like, you know, uh, if there are some already softwares or systems available, we would definitely like to know that. It's always better to know. Yeah, so, I mean, everybody is talking about only the container. Absolutely. So there is a there is a related is issue. There any possibility of consolidation there? So uh, no, there is another related issue also. Okay. A lot of people a lot of people, I mean, you are at least exporting today. There are a lot of people who can export but who don't know what to do. So they are saying, Are export to both Jamila. I don't want to get into it. So, uh, I don't know whether. Or I want to start, but I don't know how to I don't know how to do it. I, I think my product is good. You know, I was in an exhibition in uh, K in Germany and they liked they liked my product. But yeah, pata nahi, jamela hai. I will not do it. You no, know, there is a inherent fear um, that I don't know what will happen. It's a fear of unknown. So what can we do to remove this and make them export ready from a logistics perspective. Yeah. You are, uh, I think this is the uh, one conference where I've been cornered uh, by the moderator. The <laughs> Sorry, Chief. <laughs> no, but these are SME questions. Very interesting, very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I, I, can you just uh, last? I'm saying people are export ready, but they don't, they think that, I, I don't know, it's a, it's a fear. Uh, honestly, um, there is no such uh, thing readily available where, you know, you can, you have to, you, 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 that initiative has to come from you. Okay. Because there is nobody who can come who can and help. just help you. I don't, I don't know anybody of that. No, is there a forum? Is there, there a is, forum that can see, help? See, forum is there, but then 
you know, you see again, uh, you know, as, as, as MSME, at least at your association level or your forum level, you yeah. should have the visibility who is the person who is doing that. Or okay. That, at least that should be there. That doesn't mean you should go to them always, but at least that visibility should be there. What is happening in the industry? What is happening? What are the changes happening? What are the innovations coming up? How, what, how can we leverage that? There should be some kind of… Uh, so the change you know, has to come from within. within. Yeah. Change has to come from within. The exporter, the entrepreneur needs to say that, you know, world is my market. Yeah. I must start looking at new, newer products, newer market. Yeah. And like you said, we had to diversify at some point in time. Yeah. Look at innovation, look at… And that is when you sort of get into this journey. Otherwise, there isn't, there isn't there much isn't that you can… Something where you can. Something is available. But one more point which I want, maybe it's, uh, suddenly it struck my mind. Because you guys all always, uh, uh, you have a big challenge in uh, the export import, uh, because of the way it has happened, four times, five times. You know, I would, uh, I would see, again, uh, don't think, again, this downturn will uh, remain. So what you should always keep uh, uh, a tap on the fluctuation on the ocean freight. What change can happen? Because I can tell you, you know, uh, this, uh, nobody in shipping industry, I can tell you, nobody has predicted, uh, I, I've never seen in my life the ocean freight going up. So this was unprecedented, we can call it up. But again, now, now moving forward, what if you are more into export and import, just keep a tap on how the ocean freights are moving. And also look at the uh, major developments in the tonnage, what is going to be uh, uh, in the market. Look at what Maersk uh, tonnage is newly coming or MSC or any new alliance. Now you have seen Maersk and MSC, there was an alliance which is broken. Is that going to be impactful for us? Yes, maybe competition will come and you will get a better uh, ocean freight. And again, another thing is that look at the way um, uh, overall uh, ocean freight will change. What are the major factors which are going to impact? Now, uh, new buildings are not coming up, but then look at this, there are a lot of old buildings will be scrapped because of new uh, pollution uh, policy, new uh, uh, green policy. Green policy. So at that time, suddenly the tonnage will go down. 15% of the tonnage goes down means ocean freight will go up. Oh. So these are all things, you know, you should have uh, at least some idea. And there is no point then crying and say, oh, it is suddenly gone up. You, you can be at least, uh, uh, you know, preempt uh, a certain portion of this kind of, uh, uh, you know, <coughs> up and down uh, fluctuation. So the so dynamics is something that... Anika, you talked initially about the FI, FOB and CIF, and that was a very interesting point. I said we'll come to it later. What is it that was a point and how did you manage that whole, whole um, dynamic? So the, the thing is that typically everybody knows FOB means you just hand over uh, to a freight forwarder and then you don't have to worry about what happens next. CIF is when you are responsible till the end, right? And everybody prefers FOB mostly because obviously there is less hassle. But there might be ways to make money in CIF. Mm -hmm. right? That's, I would like to know from him if I can manage the shipment well, right? So if I can charge the customer X amount, but manage the shipment in X minus five or whatever it is. Uh -huh. uh, but then how do I manage the fluctuations? That's one part. Second part is air versus sea. That's a very interesting dynamic that sea will take 90 days. Air might take maybe seven days, but the costs are not the same, of course, right? So how do you optimize your cost? Is there a way uh, in like, consolidation about containers, is there a way to also consolidate uh, air shipments? Or is there a possibility to do a combination? Yeah, there is a possibility because I, I, from my experience, I can tell you in APL days, what we used to do, we used to have an air, sea, sea air. So uh, if you are, uh, it all depends on the transit of your uh, cargo. If it is two, three days, don't even think about sea. Uh, but if you have say 11, 12 or 15 days or something, uh, especially to Middle East, um, why you, you need to uh, send by uh, air yeah. uh, or uh, or another one is if you have one transshipment hub and then the next delivery point is direct to your uh, place of uh, uh, delivery then you can do air C uh, move it from say for instance if it is going to Europe and uh, you move it from here to Jabal Ali have a consolidation in Jabal Ali and move it by uh, Air or sea. So this combination we have worked out and uh, it was successful. I, I, I don't know how many are uh, uh, doing. So there are there are possibilities, but not many people are doing it. Uh. Which is the reason you need to get a good partner. <laughs> <laughs>
so so I, I, that's a point well well taken yeah, and, and i think and uh, the regarding uh, sif um see ocean rate fluctuation is more or less the same it depends on your uh, buying power there are there are, i know there are many uh, <coughs> shippers with better sif uh, ocean freight than fobi also so it 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 depends on how you can manage your supply chain so if you it's a, it's a volume it's, it's uh, no but i ha i have volume. i don't i have a case study i have a we have a customer who is into food right he makes ready to eat and ready to uh, cook food and he got into cif just before covid now i'll not say anything else <laughs> <laughs> then it was rest in peace <laughs> so that's what happened no, I, 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 if you don't have a robust uh, supply chain capability please don't get into all this no actually it is not his choice it was a customer's choice to say you should do cif uh, and it was to australia and uh, the decision was something else uh, the price went something else and the first two consignments were helped and then after that things happened uh, quite bad but to the credit of the customer he managed the entire uh, flow quite well and uh, that i mean again that is a nimble footedness of the msme who comes and who takes decisions and who takes who's able to do a lot of things in all this you talked about the you know the partner being uh, uh, can the partner advise on the cost i'll give you an example uh there is an exporter 90% of his business is export he exports wax right wax for various applications so when I, when we met him for the first time he opened a, a broadsheet full scale paper full sheet he said sir mera cost ye aata hai ye aata hai ye aata hai and he had an excel sheet and then he says profit is so much and then this is my price and this he has this he has uh, for last i don't know how many years he showed me at least 7 years i'm sure he has for more so he runs it in in that chopri form in in whatever way i'm sure it is right for him i don't know if it is efficient can a partner look at it and say i can reduce the cost by so much or because of the partner the cost dramatically reduces for the exporter okay you know, see here the issue is uh, what is reduction of cost means normally what you what what when you say redu reducing cost means you will go to the service provider skews his neck and reduce 2% 1% yeah. that is not the cost reduction Correct. because i i have seen a large uh, manufacturer in india having a large volume uh, the supply chain uh, had said very uh, every year we reduce the supply chain cost what reducing the transportation cost you know the wastage of money because of that because see beyond a point any transport service provider won't be able to fulfill this commitment lot of cost which is coming going under the carpet the the waiting period of the uh, truck will go up the detention will go up uh, other ancillary cost will go up but this all will be not shown as a it's shown as supply chain is reduced but there are other costs and the inefficiency in the system you won't be able to uh, supply the material on time uh, there won't be much transparency so but cost is reduced so so a partner can help you a right person who understands the entire uh, gamut of logistics definitely will be able to uh, help you on the overall cost reduction of logistics but that doesn't mean your logistics cost is reducing but there are lot other other uh, uh, there is a customer service there is customer, customer satisfaction which cannot be measured actually stuff. and even your business uh, absolutely growth business the business growth. can grow yeah absolutely so these are uh, uh, the larger ways the to look at the uh, entire supply yeah, chain cost that is what i am i'm just urging you all don't look at uh, a very minute way of reducing the cost look at the overall optimization and see from your overall business perspective the uh, uh, business uh, decision which i take in the supply chain how is impacting your uh, the, the overall business yeah sure so at this point in time if we have any audience questions we can take we have just maybe 5 minutes um, can just take any audience questions and yeah hemant hemant yeah yeah so so very very interesting perspective anil i mean i never looked at logistics uh, from these angles uh, what you talked but for msme the biggest thing i mean devang and you both uh, i mean it was a very interesting uh, education the problems of any msme are actually genuine in the sense typically if i talk about my company our export is definitely growing but because we are in a high value product and a specialty product 
the fluctuation doesn't matter. I mean, we very quietly and confidently pass it on to the customer and most of the times they accept it. Don't speak loudly. <laughs> Uh, but things are not going to be same, obviously. I mean, uh, today we have a monopoly, how long it will continue. So there is a definite need, and we both know, me and my partner, that this is only, uh, a honeymoon is only going to last for a while. Ultimately, we need optimization. Ultimately, need uh, we need efficiency. And ultimately, we need some partner. I mean, you talked about uh, monitoring the, the freight cost. Who has a time? I mean, in MSME, who has a time? My time is far more important in looking at the production, the quality, the product development. After that, everything for me, it is not a great statement, but everything for me is, and we can't afford people who are expert in logistics, who are expert in uh, keeping uh, a tab on uh, freight cost and uh, what is the trend and all that. So how do we overcome that? I mean, that is where, I mean, one good point you both said that, yeah, I mean, there are uh, partners like you where we give you the um, shipment and everything is taken care of. We are relieved of the tensions. And the other thing is uh, you mentioned that how can we consolidate? So obviously the local um, uh, federation in typical every MIDC area, yeah, yes. probably they should take the initiative and we should f collectively try to do it. But in spite of that, I believe people like you, I mean, I'm not talking about you per se, but people like you, I mean, you should take the initiative in going around the local area and you should form, uh, uh, I mean, you should take the initiative to consolidate the consignments in that area. If that happens or telling the people what to do, what not to do, will we'll really take uh, the MSME a long way ahead. Absolutely. I'll, 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 have a, uh, I'll tell you the problem, why nobody is doing it. If I go to, let's come to the one particular MIDC and I go to 10 different people, uh, they're not going to listen to me. They'll say, yeah, this is what I'm doing. But if it, the need should come from you, not from me. Here, I'm going for a business. You give me, I'll consolidate, I'll do business. That, you know, it's very difficult. Why, uh, rather, I'll tell you why people are not going. Rather, I'll go to a large uh, company, I'll spend my time there, Absolutely. I'll get 100 containers in one, yeah, one, that is one true, uh, visit. See, so rather, rather than that, if that need, that is why I said a change of perception. Because this is, uh, traditionally, everybody is doing it. We have been doing it, shipping when we were at the uh, lower, uh, when you are a marketing executive, you go and draw, uh, knock everybody's uh, door. But that is nothing new. But what I'm saying is, change the perception, and the need should come from you, and then you do it, and then the, I'll tell you, 100 people will come to you after that. No, I completely agree. That is one. Creating the awareness. Uh, yeah, and is, sec is second thing, is, uh, second thing what you talk I about, I agree, agree with you, you don't need I to... I thought it can be a combination. No, I mean, people no. like you come, and then you... Maybe we can organize a seminar. You that can talk is different. about the that considered is the, if, if you initiate, we come, that is different. But okay. if we take initiative, nobody is going to uh, support us for that. Okay. I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is, this is how the uh, industry works. And no, no, I agree. to your other question, you don't need to put a very uh, high fancy salaried guy to do all this. What I'm saying is, first, the thought process that this is important, that you fell right. This is important. But it was not there, ne there, never in your mind. So once you, at the decision-making level, have a slightly change in your thought process, like, yeah, supply chain, ocean freight, these are few monitorings we should do, then it will happen, I'm telling you. Hemant, you had a question. Yeah, I was just saying. Yeah, yeah, please. please. So Hemant, Hemant. Yes. No, no, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So essentially, you're right. Say, DP World today, we were serving all shipping line for last 25 years in the country or forwarders, we never went out to the BCO to understand their pain point because we, we were giving best service to the forwarder or the uh, shipping line. Now, our thinking has undergone a change that if you want to reduce the logistic cost overall, it is not enough to make port efficient or rail efficient. You need to do the entire multi Absolutely. Effort. Now, our thinking, so till, if I say 2016, our customers were 100. Today we have a 6,000 customer list. 
we want to expand it full forward. Now, today we are also struggling to get the kind of sales skill set who can go understand because they are used to, if you tell the sales guy, exactly as Anil says, kitne container hai, so hai to jayega, do hai to, he is not interested, he will not make a sales call also. Yeah, now in, that. In that day, yes, <laughs> uh, he can do maximum five calls. No, they were, I think that has been an industry problem. You see, you saw the finance panel which Dr. Sina was uh, you know, moderating. Today, even an SBI wants to talk to an SME. There was a time when you know people were not even bothered. Arey, yar, kitna hai? Panch crore ke liye kyu itna tension lene ka? I'll go to somebody who gives me 500 crores. My documentation is same. And this this thought that you know MSME is high risk is also not right because if I am the guy who's running it. I am like the worker in that place. No, why will I be risk? In fact, the large company is a risk. The small company is not a risk. I am the owner of the place. Every day morning, my only occupation is go to the place and come back. I don't have 20 businesses, boss. I am the least risk. And I mean, life, life, everybody is a risk. But otherwise, SMEs are the least risk. But you know, hopefully, this is changing. And people like you know, and, and also people like Sachin are going to change, and hopefully we'll have some statement by what he's saying. Uh, uh, Hemant, you had a question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it, it starts uh, from you know Anil's strength points. Now, instead of looking out uh, for a horizontal consolidation, Anil, I know his strength. Uh, you can be a buyer to the exporters, small exporters or mid-sized exporters. You buy, cost adjusted and uh, you know the profits uh, export promotion uh, profits uh, concessions uh, adjusted and you sell it to the uh, negotiated parties it's a tripartite agreement you will be the initial buyer local buyer and you supply it to the uh, targeted party uh, in dubai or wherever uh, the other coast and that will be you, know, you are using your strain points we are using our strain points of manufacturing and quality controls and everything you earn your profits additional profits telescopic profits and there is nothing wrong. So instead of horizontal, uh, they thing, and for horizontal, I am sure you can guide us, the small scale pairs, medium scale pairs. Like there are EPZ uh, schemes available. You encourage us to split our business, local business, traditional, wherever we are. Take our, you know, a complete uh, unit, a separate export processing unit, and there you can have your good office and uh, consolidated. Uh, uh, you know, uh, total uh, services given to 100% of the units. It is not like you have to have Gram Sabha call all uh, 150 from one MIDC. You have 50 good export oriented units and they need your service by definition. So I think, and the first one is more important. Anil can buy goods from us, he can, and, and finances that, are there all over. Uh, uh, different perspective, I, we should. Uh, yeah, that's also another good uh, okay. Uh, okay. point. Okay. Yeah, business. So, guys, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for this time. Uh, thanks, Anil. Thanks, thanks Aniket. Thanks, thanks yeah. uh, for this yeah. enlightening session. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you so much to all our speakers and our moderator. Um, we request. Okay, sir, please kindly uh, hand over the mementos as a token of our appreciation. Mr. Malshe. Mr. Radhakrishnan. <laughs> and Mr. Srinivasan. Please.